尊敬的侯伟斯根主席，各位朋友、各位同事，大家好。Simon t e n i s 陈先生，回顾二零二三年，世界充满动荡不安，人类面临多重挑战，保护主义、泛安全化冲击世界经济，单边主义、集团政治重创国际体系。乌克兰危机延宕加剧，中东冲突硝烟再起，人工智能、气候变化、太空基地等新的挑战接踵而来。今天我在这里要向大家传递的最重要的信息是：不论国际风云如何变幻，中国作为负责任的大国，我们将始终保持大政方针的连续性和稳定性。坚定所动荡世界中的稳定力量。第一，中国愿所推动大国合作的稳定力量。大国对全球战略稳定负有关键责任。习近平主席明确指出，大国竞争不是这个时代的底色。国际形势越动荡，大国越要加强协调；风险挑战越突出，大国越要增进合作。今年是中美建交四十五周年，历史经验的教训表明，中美合作可以办成有利两国和世界的大事，中美对抗，两国和世界都会遭殃。两国元首去年底举行重要的会晤，开辟了面向未来的旧金山愿景。中方将坚定维护正当合法权益，反对无理遏制打压。本着对历史、对人民、对世界负责的态度，与美方共同落实好两国元首的共识，推动中美关系沿着相互尊重、和平共处、合作共赢的正轨前行。俄罗斯是中国的最大邻国。中俄关系在不结盟、不对抗、不针对第三方的基础上，稳定发展，符合双方的共同利益，也有利于亚太和全球的战略稳定，为新型大陆关系做出了有力的探索。中国和欧洲，我们作为世界上两大力量、两大文明、两大市场。我们应该意识到双方承担的国际责任，一个更加稳定、紧密的中欧关系，不仅能够成就彼此，还将照亮世界。我们应排除地缘政治和意识形态的干扰，坚持伙伴而非对手的地位，共同为应对乱局，注入正能量，为共克时艰，提供新方向。Point the way for overcoming difficulties together. Second, China will be a force for stability in addressing hotspot issues. We have worked to explore a Chinese way of addressing hotspot issues, one that advocates for non-interference in internal affairs and opposes imposing one's will on others, upholds impartiality and justice, and opposes pursuing selfish interests, seeks political settlement and opposes using force, aims to address both symptoms and root causes, and opposes myopia and one-sidedness. For the Chinese active mediation, a historic reconciliation was reached between Saudi Arabia and Iran, setting off a wave of reconciliation across the Middle East. This is a living example of implementing the Global Security Initiative put forth by President Xi Jinping. The recent escalation and the overthrow of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and ongoing tensions in the Red Sea once again demonstrate that the question of Palestine is at the heart of the Middle East. Generations of the Palestinian people have been displaced, unable to return to their homes to this day. This is the longest-lasting injustice in our world. China has stood firm on the side of fairness and justice all along, vigorously working for an end to the conflict and for the protection of civilians. China pushed the UN Security Council to adopt the first resolution since the latest conflict broke out. And issued a position paper on the political settlement of the conflict. China calls for accelerated efforts in establishing an 
实效的国际合会，真正实现巴勒斯坦和以色列两个国家的和平共处。在乌克兰危机上。中国从未放弃劝和的努力，从未停下促谈的脚步。习近平主席亲自同包括俄罗斯、乌克兰在内的各个领导人深入沟通，为应对危机发挥建设性作用。中方还专门发布立场文件，多次派出特使穿梭斡旋。我们所做的一切都通往一个目标，那就是为止战凝聚共识。为和谈铺路加桥。我们持续努力推动朝鲜半岛问题政治解决，当务之急是要防止恶性循环，解决当事方合理的安全关切，推动局势实现降温回暖。我们推动缅甸各方。在中国昆明签署了平和协议，坚决维护缅北的和平稳定，鼓励东盟在不干涉内政的前提下，促进缅甸问题的妥善解决。我们还积极支持阿富汗，包容建设，温和施政，防止恐怖主义再次滋生蔓延。中国。疆域辽阔，领土众多，历史悠久的矛盾和争端错综复杂，但是我们始终坚持协商管控分歧、对话、解决争议。我们愿意同中国加快南海协议的准则，四月四日磋商，推进海上合作与共同开发，把南海真正建设成为和平之海，合作之海。永居之海。第三，中国愿意做加强全球治理的稳定力量。当今国际体系面临单边主义、强权政治的严重冲击，重振多边主义、加强团结应对，成为国际社会的共同呼声。我们认为，联合国的权威和核心地位只能加强，绝不能消弱。联合国宪章、宗旨和原则从未过时，而是更加重要。中国已经是派遣维和人员最。多的安理会常理事长，我们也是联合国的第二大会费和第二大维和的摊位。中国支持安理会在和平与安全问题上发挥重要作用，支持联合国举办未来峰会，提出更多应对挑战的可行的方案。面对气候威胁，中国推动联合国气候大会达成阿联酋共识。我们将用历史上最短的时间完成全球最高的碳排放强度的降幅。我们对此说到做到。面对人工智能挑战，中国支持在联合国框架下成立国际人工智能智能机构。共同维护人类的福祉。我们积极加强全球南方的团结合作，推动金砖实现历史性多元，支持非盟加入二十国集团，致力于提升发展中国家在全球事务中的代表性、发言权，助力全球治理的架构更加均衡、更有时效。And effective global governance architecture. As the largest developing country, China has been doing its best to provide more public goods to the world. From the Belt and Road Initiative to the global development initiative, the global security initiative, and the global civilization initiative, China has stayed committed to cooperation, openness, and equality. 以平等为基础，为应对全球挑战，继续做出中国的贡献。
加强全球治理，必须坚持尊重各国的主权和领土完整。台湾是中国领土不可分割的一部分。台湾的事务是中国的内政。遵守基本国际准则，就应当坚持一个中国的原则。维护台海的和平稳定，就必须坚定的在台湾。第四。中国愿意做促进全球增长的稳定力量。各位非常关注中国的经济，我要强调的是，中国经济始终充满活力和韧性，长期向好的势头更去明显。去年以百分之五点二的增速，贡献了全球三分之一的增长。随着世界上最大规模市场的快速增长，中国将向世界释放更大的利好。全球工商界普遍认为，下一个中国还是中国。集中精力实现中国式现代化，是中国人民当前最大的。政治共识，加快推进高质量发展，是中国在新时代的应对。正如习近平主席所强调的，中国开放的大门只会越开越大。我们将继续扩大制度性的、制度性的开放，缩减外资准入的负面清单，为包括欧洲在内的各国的企业提供更为市场化。Market-oriented,law-based,business-environment,up-to-international-standards,focus-on-these-from-Europe-around-the-world. Today, rejecting decoupling has become an international consensus. More people have come to realize that the absence of cooperation is the biggest risk. Those who attempt to shut China out in the name of de-risking will make a historical mistake. The world economy is a big ocean that cannot be cut into isolated lakes. The trend towards economic globalization cannot be reversed. We need to work together to make globalization more universally beneficial and inclusive, so that more countries and people can benefit from the process. Friends, a German proverb says. Those who work alone add. Those who work together multiply. This is also true for state-to-state relations. We hope that all countries can seek win-win and avoid lose-lose. Let us work together like passengers in the same boat, bring more certainty to the world, and usher in a brighter future for humanity. That is my opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Excellency, for your remarks, and thank you in your last remark to picking up the motto of this conference, which is "lose lose," but with a question mark, because uh, we want to look at a silver lining. And uh, um, thank you for for um, um, participating in a in a discussion. This conference. Um, again, um, as in the last two years, was very much focused on Russia's aggression against Ukraine. We had yesterday the, the testimony of uh, Yulia uh, um, Navalny here. We had President Zelensky here. We have in the neighboring hotel, the Rosewood Hotel, we have an exhibition on the, um, on the horror, horror that the war brought to, to Ukraine. And um, I want to come back on this. And um, in 1994, 
the so-called Budapest Memorandum was agreed. Um, the Budapest Memorandum um, asked from Ukraine to get rid of all its nuclear weapons and in return Russia and others um, guaranteed its um, um, sovereignty and territorial integrity. Um, now, China at the time, member of Security Council, endorsed it, and um, your colleague, Sergei Lavrov, was the ambassador to the UN and made it to a document of the Security Council. This is where we, where we stand, and this is where we stood when um, two years ago the aggression took place, where this document of Security Council was not honored. Um, and um, uh, you mentioned that you have been active in trying to resolve the, the crisis, which we appreciate. And, uh, but at the same time, when you look um, at the economy, we saw that in 2022, the trade between Russia and um, uh, China increased by 30%. Um, this year, uh, no, uh, last year, it um, um, increased by 25%. Um, we are at $240 billion trade. Um, and my question to you, if I may, shouldn't you um, put some more pressure on Russia and um, also some economic pressure to make sure that what you said in your speech, the respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity is preserved and that we strengthen the UN? Because after all, this is a document of the Security Council which was um, which was violated by Russia. The Budapest Memorandum of was signed by the U.S., U.K., and Russia. China is not a party to the memorandum, but through a national statement, we recognized this memorandum. As we can't decide what other countries do, but on China's part, we have honored our commitment faithfully. We articulated clearly to the world that China will not use nuclear weapon against non-nuclear weapon states. And not first to use nuclear weapons against any country, including Ukraine. President Xi has stated that a nuclear war cannot be fought and a nuclear weapon cannot be used. This is something that all sides must be observed, and the new security of the nuclear facility must be protected. And China has fulfilled in international obligation. China did not start the Ukraine crisis or participate in it, but we did not sit idly by and watch it from a distance. We did not exploit the situation, but instead we have been facilitating peace talks. President Xi has stated clearly China's position, that is, first, the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries must be respected, and second, the purposes and principles of the UN Charter must be fully observed, and third, the legitimate security concerns of all countries must be taken seriously, and fourth, all efforts that are conducive to peace must be supported. So, acting on those basic principles, China has been working relentlessly to promote peace, to promote peace talks. Now there are not the right conditions in place for parties to go back to the negotiating table, but as long as there is hope, we will not give up our efforts. The earlier the peace talks, then the loss of all parties will be reduced. As for China's relations with Russia, in my opening remarks, I said that the no alliance, no confrontation, and not talking any third party, that is the principle. It's a normal relationship between two major countries. We are opposed to any attempt to blame China or to shift the responsibility of resolving the Ukraine to China. Well, China has done a lot of constructive work, and we will continue to play our positive role on this. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Thank you for this um, response. Um, let me stay with um, business questions. In the last two months, um, two German companies, um, Volkswagen and BASF, um, came into trouble um, because over business dealing with uh, Xinjiang. There is Germany and EU have passed new regulations for um, human rights standards in, um, in supply chains and um, human rights situation for the Uyghurs in, in Xinjiang is going to stay um, an, a political and economic issue. Um, you remember a couple of years ago there was a report of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Um, what can you do to resolve this issue and are you planning to, to do something so um, accusations about forced labors are no longer coming from your country? 关于中国新疆的事物啊，有些呃国际事业上的太多的谣言，制造了太多的虚假的信息。新疆自治区成立以来，我只介绍一些基本的数字。新疆自治区成立以来，我只介绍一些基本的数字。新疆自治区成立以
人类命运的共同体，这就是我们中国人的胸怀，也是我们中国人的目标。我们希望能够得到朋友们的更多的理解和支持。谢谢。谢谢。谢谢。谢谢。谢谢。谢谢。Thank you. Thank you very much. I think there is a worldwide recognition what China has done over uh, decades to bring so many people out of poverty into a, a have, uh, into the possibility to have a decent life. But I um, take up and uh, thank you very much for the offer also for visits in, in, in Xinjiang uh, so that people can see with their own eyes. Um, you mentioned um, trade, um, which is very important. We are seeing right now um, how the freedom of navigation is threatened in the Red Sea. Um, we see also that there are more and more risky encounters at sea in the Taiwan Street and the South China Sea, which um, is um, due to a Chinese show of force. Um, how can we avoid these incidents in the future? And is there a, ch is a chance that China agrees to a code of conduct for the South China Sea? <laughs> Well, first I want to say that the Taiwan question cannot be compared with what's happening in the Red Sea. The Taiwan question is China's internal affairs. Taiwan is a part of China. It has never been a country. Well, in 1943, China the United States and the United Kingdom issued the Carroll Declaration, and I see in the audience the Foreign Minister of uh, Egypt. It stated clearly that all the territories Japan has stolen from the Chinese, such as uh, Taiwan, shall be restored to China. And in 1945, the Potsdam Declaration was signed, which reiterated that the terms of the Carroll Declaration shall be carried out. So to ta for Taiwan to return to China is a basic requirement, and due to the Chinese Civil War, the two sides across the have yet to be reunified, but it will be realized. This is the strong will of the 1.4 billion Chinese people and the trend of history. Now, who is opposing reunification and who is supporting independence? It is the DPP that, uh, in, that's governing the Taiwan island. So to uphold the one China principle, one needs to support the peaceful reunification of China and to safeguard peace across the strait. It is essential to oppose Taiwan independence because Taiwan independence is irreconcilable with peace across the Taiwan Strait. When it comes to the South China Sea, the South China Sea Islands have all along been Chinese territory. And when China exercised administration over those islands, the countries surrounding those neighboring countries were not even established. But in the 1960s and 70s, when China was going through the Cultural Revolution, China's neighbors occupied some of the islands reefs of the Nansha Islands, which caused disputes as we see them today. But China has exercised restraint, and we've been pursuing dialogue and negotiation to resolve those issues, not like some major country which resorts to force easily. But China's approach is dialogue. So in 2002, China signed with the 10 ASEAN countries the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea, the DOC, which helped to safeguard freedom of uh, um, navigation and overflight in the South China Sea. And in recent years, China suggested that we upgrade the Taiwan Strait and 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 the Taiwan Strait 
Now the chat of the COC. Have, we have finished the third, three rounds of reading. We believe that as long as we work in solidarity with ASEAN and stay clear of distractions, we will be able to conclude a COC in the South China Sea. Between China and ASEAN countries, we have the wisdom and ability to safeguard peace and stability in the South China Sea and safeguard the freedom of navigation and overflight there, and also safeguard the legitimate rights of other countries in this region. As for the Red Sea, it is a typical spillover from the fighting in Gaza. China has been calling publicly for parties not to harass the commercial ships in that area to safeguard the security of the waterway. And but actions must be taken in accordance with international law and with mandate from the Security Council. To address the Red Sea issue, the root cause must be resolved. And the root cause is the ongoing fighting in Gaza. China's position is clear on that. First, an immediate ceasefire must be realized. No more fighting. And second, to make sure the humanitarian corridors are unimpeded. And third, hold an international peace conference as soon as possible to revive the two-state solution. We cannot allow this humanitarian disaster to continue anymore. Nearly 30,000 civilians have lost their lives in the fighting. And there are also many lives who are unaccounted lost, who were unaccounted for. We cannot allow the situation to continue in the 21st century. Now, generations of the Palestinian people have been displaced, unable to establish an independent state. We simply cannot allow the situation to continue. So there should be a more concerted voice. There should be a more unified position. We should call for a proper settlement of the question of Palestine, which has been lingering on for more than 70 years. Efforts should be made toward a two-state solution. Only when that is realized can the state of Palestine and the state of Israel live in peace and with assurance from the international community can enduring security be enjoyed by Israel. A country cannot establish its security on the insecurity of others. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency, for your readiness to take these questions, for the, your contribution, for the discussion. We really appreciate it. And uh, you ended up where we started with the Secretary General of the United Nations making a plea for the rules-based international order, for the respect of the UN, for the respect of UN resolutions. And we hope that this remains the common basis um, in the coming year. And um, can I already extend an invitation to you to come back next year? <laughs> uh, the next year, China will continue to send a delegation on this arena. We stand ready to share our views with uh, all parties to make China's contribution to global peace and stability. China is the country with the best record in terms of peace and security. We have never started a single war, and we have never participated in a single war, and we have never tried to support other countries' uh, government. China's development is, uh, represents a growth of force for stability and for peace. We hope that countries will view China's development in an objective and perspective and out of goodwill so that we can realize common prosperity and common development together to avoid the situation that is mentioned in the theme of this conference, a lose-lose situation. We need to seek win-win. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the next session will continue momentarily, so please everybody remain seated. We'll continue in just a moment.